1881, a German immigrant named Hans Tiedemann built a beautiful Queen Anne-style mansion on Franklin Boulevard in Cleveland, Ohio. He quickly moved his wife and children into the home and named the property the Franklin Castle. Over time, many dark events occurred on the property, leading it to be known as one of the most haunted houses in Ohio. This is the Franklin Castle. I'm Ashton, and welcome to the Haunted Corner. Welcome back to the Haunted Corner. I'm back with another spooky tale for you. Today we're going to be talking about Franklin Castle. This one has been featured on all of the ghost shows. Ghost Adventures performed an investigation at the castle during season 23, if you want to check it out. And the hauntings continue to this day. So let's get into it. Prior to the construction of the castle, there was a two-story wooden home on the property that was called Bachelor's Hall. The house was built by four brothers before they enlisted in the army around the Civil War, which only two would survive. Shortly after, a man named Hans Tiedemann would purchase the property for his family. Hans was born in Prussia and emigrated from Germany to New York with his family in 1848. He started working as an apprentice to a barrel maker, and by 1864, he was a wholesale grocer in the firm of Weidman and Tiedemann after he started a business with a man named Christian Weidman. Tiedemann would go on to found and become vice president of Savings and Trust Company, which was one of the first institutions organized in Ohio under the law permitting the formation of trust companies. In 1865, Hans, along with his wife Louisa, purchased the Bachelor's Hall and moved in with their six children. Their children's names were Wilhelmine Hannah, August Johannes, Emma, Ernst, Dora Louise, and Albert. But only August, Emma, and Dora would survive infancy. In January of 1881, Emma Tiedemann died of diabetes, and she was only 15 years old at this time. Shortly after this, Hans' mother passed away as well. Hans and Louisa had already buried three of their children, Arnst, Albert, and Wilhelmine, so they were no strangers to grief. During this time, to help his wife through the tragedies and to distract her from the darkness in their lives, Hans enlisted the well-known architectural firm Cadell and Richardson to construct a beautiful Queen Anne-style castle for the family to live in on the property. The Bachelor's Hall was demolished and the family moved to their summer home in Lakewood while the construction of their new home was underway. One request of Hans was to add a ballroom, which runs the length of the house on the fourth floor of the manor. During construction, turrets and gargoyles were added to the edifice's facade, giving the house an even more pronounced castle-like appearance. There are rumors that hidden passageways, concealed rooms, and hidden doors were also added during the construction, but none have ever been found. The family lived in the home for several years, experiencing great loss along the way. Louisa Tiedemann passed away in March of 1895 of liver failure. So Hans' wife, his mother, and four of his six children would pass away on the property. And shortly after his wife Louisa's death, he remarried a woman named Henrietta and moved out of the Franklin Castle by 1897. 
Hans then sold the home to a local brewing family called the Mulhausers, and he died on January 22nd, 1908, following a massive stroke that he suffered while on a walk in a park. In 1929, his 39-year-old son, Carl, jumped off a bridge immediately following a car accident, and his death was ruled a suicide. He was said to be suffering from peculiar nervous tension for months prior to his death. But what caused his death? Many people speculate that the curse of the Franklin Castle still held on to him after all that time. The Mulhauser family sold the castle to the local German Socialist Party in 1913. And they used the property to conduct meetings and to host parties. A German shortwave radio was said to have been found hidden in the rafters of the house years later, leading to rumors that the socialists may have actually been using the house as a spy headquarters during World War I. It's also said that at this time, the house was used to produce illegal liquor because a whiskey still would be found in a hidden room two decades later. In January of 1968, James Romano, his wife, and six children moved into the home. The Romano family reported several encounters with ghosts in their new home and attempted exorcisms and even had a former ghost hunting group investigate the castle. This is the first time reports of paranormal activity in the castle had been made public. By 1974, the Romanos decided to leave the house and sold it to Sam Muscatello, who planned to turn the castle into a church. To raise money for the church, haunted house tours and overnight stays at the castle were offered. While knocking down a wall in January of 1975, Muscatello made a very grim discovery. He found a partial human skeleton concealed in a void within the walls of the castle. The bones were reportedly old and brittle to the touch, so whose bones were they? In the 1980s, there was a medium who claimed that Hans had reached out to her and confessed that he had a hand in the deaths of his children. There's an author named William Kretschke who wrote a book called The Haunted Franklin Castle, and he strongly believes that Hans had nothing to do with the deaths in the family and that this story is complete nonsense. In 1982, the location was added to the National Register of Historic Places. Helen Marchetta owned the house in the 80s and claims that she was attacked several times and even pushed down the stairs a few times. She also claims that she felt depressed and sad in the house and she couldn't explain why. But after they moved, she says that she felt better. She and her husband heard babies crying within the walls. And one time, they placed a tape recorder in the closet to catch noises. When they listened back to the tape recorder, they they heard an older man screaming at a young girl and the sound of a clock ticking. Over time, poltergeist activity has been prevalent with items moving and being thrown across rooms. Shadows follow you as you move through the halls, and voices bounce off the walls at every turn. Many visitors to the home reported encounters with a woman in black, hearing strange sounds, including crying and laughing, cold spots in several rooms, and objects vanishing into thin air. Other people who have visited the castle have reported capturing ghostly orbs and photos and have heard a demon-like growl on several occasions. Now, here's a little Hollywood connection for you all. In early 1984, Michael Davinko, Judy Garland's fifth and final husband, purchased Franklin Castle and almost immediately started making major renovations to the house. 
Over the next 10 years, Davinko spent close to $1 million renovating the castle, even going so far as to track down some of the original furnishings for the castle. He reportedly hosted some pretty wild parties at the castle before putting it up for sale. In the spring of 1999, the Franklin Castle was sold to Michelle Heimberger, who began a huge renovation project. That November, the house was broken into and set on fire by a man, causing extensive damage to the structure and and destroying the fourth floor ballroom. He said to police that he did it because the castle was evil. In 2000, a new roof was put onto the building, but for the next 11 years, the Franklin Castle would sit boarded up and in an advanced state of despair. In December of 2022, the castle opened its doors to guests who want to experience the haunting for themselves. According to the Franklin Castle website, guests can book the following one-night stays on most Fridays or Saturdays. Emma's room, Johan's room, Louisa's dwelling, and the castle, which includes three floors of the building and can accommodate up to 12 guests. The rooms are styled with period furnishings and prices range from $175 per person to $245 per person. But beware, and be sure to take a friend with you, because during your stay, you may encounter more than just a fun night in a spooky old house. And that is the haunted history of the Franklin Castle. Thanks for tuning in today. I know that was a quickie, but I hope you enjoyed it. The sources for today's episode will be listed in the show notes and also on the blog post for the episode at www.thehauntedcorner.com. Check out the other episodes of The Haunted Corner available now wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts with new episodes dropping every Monday and Thursday. You can also listen to us on YouTube if you'd prefer to listen to us there. If you're enjoying the podcast and would like to share your support, head on over to Patreon. You'll have access to the exclusive Patreon-only episodes, including Cruise Ship Disappearances Part 2 and Haunted Roads Volume 2. You'll also have access to early and ad-free episodes, plus so much more. So head on over to patreon.com slash thehauntedcorner to join now. Follow us on social media at The Haunted Corner on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. If you're enjoying the podcast, be sure to tell a friend. And if you have a case suggestion or a correction to share, or you want to send in a spooky story for me to share on the air, please let me know. Please send it to thehauntedcorner at gmail.com or submit it through the website. And until next time, be kind and take care of yourselves and each other, and we'll see you soon. Bye.